Welcome back. It's another episode of Butt Crack Cycles. That is my YouTube channel, and my name's Paul. Um, if you're new here, thanks for watching. This channel is pretty much about vintage and like what I call old school Harley Davidson. So pretty much uh, Evo engines and earlier. And uh, today we're working on my shovel head. This thing has uh, definitely taught me the meaning of the phrase trouble head because it sure has been one. But I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel of this project. Um, I have a playlist about this bike, so if you want to go catch up on old videos of where I started, this has been a pretty long-running um, project. I've been working on this bike for months now, and really only just actually took it on its first like legit, you know, more than 25 mile an hour test ride, like last week I think it was, or maybe it was about maybe a week and a half ago. Anyways, um, I don't know if it comes through on the camera, this bike's sitting on the stand right now because I've got some work to do to it, and I'm going to just kind of make like a little quick list, and then we're going to talk about the things that I need to do and try and get accomplished over the course of this episode to kind of push this bike a little bit further along to being, you know, maybe not done, because is any project motorcycle or car ever really done? But it, at least done enough that I can ride it, you know, reliably and regularly. So, let's talk about our list. So thing number one is this tire right here. If you are an astute observer, you will notice that this uh, Metzler ME888 tire, not only does it have some dried dog poop in the treads, it is also on backwards. Um, by which I mean, when I put the wheel back in, the forks, I goofed up and I didn't look at the tire rotation. So I need to take this wheel back out and flip it and put it back on there, which really isn't a big deal because you'll also notice too that um, we have no front brakes. If you go back to some previous episodes, the master cylinder on this bike was absolutely, completely disgusting. It was destroyed inside. The brake fluid was crystallized. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. And I was going to just order two new calipers for this bike, but I can't find new calipers anywhere. So I actually ordered a caliper rebuild kit um, for both front calipers. This bike has dual discs on the front. And we're gonna try and rebuild those brake calipers. Um, so I need to find the calipers. I'm not quite sure where they are, but on to other things. All right, this isn't gonna really show up well on camera, but uh, right here in the carburetor where the accelerator pump diaphragm sits, I noticed that uh, if you walk away from this bike and leave the fuel on, it doesn't puke out of the overflow like it's got a stuck needle and seat. It's leaking very slowly around here. Um, it's funny because if the bike's running, it doesn't leak, but if you leave the fuel on and the bike on the kickstand, it will leak. So uh, I'm gonna pop that off. I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and pull the whole carburetor off again. Yeah, see what's going on there. I bet probably I just didn't get the diaphragm down in the little groove on the pump cover all the way, um, or something of that nature. So we'll we'll figure that out. That that won't be too hard. I think I'm just gonna start with uh, with swapping this wheel around. It's kind of low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? It's quick and easy. Kind of makes you feel like uh, makes you feel like you did something. It's almost lunchtime, and I've been working on another bike right behind me, or well, behind the camera. I guess it's behind me too. And um, so if I if I do this and then just go inside and eat some lunch, I can still kind of feel like I did something. Oh, you know what? Loosen the slider cat bolts. I do that every time. Give her the old tap 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 roomy.
Well, camera battery died on me and I didn't realize it, but you didn't really miss much. It's just, uh, you know, flipping the wheel around. And um, getting the spacers in the right way, which I'm going to find a torque wrench and we'll torque the axle and torque the uh, slider caps and then move on to other stuff. Of course. Yeah, so there we go. Got a wheel back on going the right way. And I'm just going to take a cloth with a little degreaser because I got some axle grease on this while I was working. And just kind of try and clean this up a little bit. This bike will get a bath eventually, but eh, at least get the grease off of the brake rotor. Speaking of brakes, um, let's find out where my calipers are. So I came out here to jump on the red bike because I can't find the calipers anywhere inside my little shop, which means they must be at my storage unit. And um, I was gonna just ride this over there and throw them in my sissy bar bag, but I haven't ridden this bike in like a month. It's been sitting out here under my lean-to, under this all-weather cover since I haven't been able to sell this thing, um, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, I guess it's because it's getting me fall and closing in on winter. Um, anyways, I'm rambling. But yeah, despite the fact that this battery is about a year old, seems to have uh, gone kaput on me. So yeah. But it is really nice weather out today and I really want to ride a bike, so I think I'm just going to grab a backpack and ride this thing over to the storage unit. So, two shots on the accelerator pump. Turn the idle up a hair because the choke is wired open on this bike. I made it out here to the storage unit. There's Chris's iron head. Y'all have seen that in an episode before and you'll probably see it again later. Collecting dust. And um, I'm gonna dig through boxes of parts until I find what I'm looking for. Might actually just be right in here. Okay there. There's one. Awesome. Just throw them in the book bag. Go home. Okay, so we're back with our book bag full of parts. Got our calipers. Put those on the workbench. And I also grabbed this uh, box full of parts. Weasel it out of here. I might have to put the camera down for it. Anyways, um, a lot of this stuff is other stuff for... The shovel head, there's an extra set of points for it, um, got some extra, just little bits and bobs and pieces, stuff like, um, this is the, the uh, bracket that goes underneath the gas tanks, and those like narrow WX style tanks that are on the bike right now, um, god this camera does not want to focus, there it goes need this and they don't have it right now and the reason for that is because previously before putting these narrowed tanks on the spike had big FL style tanks on it big tanks like five gallon tanks and um, somebody cut the 
stock mounting tabs off of this bike. So that bracket that I was showing you will be something that we need to eventually put on when I pull these tanks back off to paint. And I talked about this last episode. I, I think I'm probably, I'm probably gonna ditch this boat tail fender, but let's walk back over to the bench and um, we're gonna start taking some calipers apart. Okay, so we're gonna start taking these apart. We're just gonna, I'll show you how to do it on this one. Um, these are just the single piston calipers. I don't remember what year these came out on a FX bike. These are what is on a FX style bike. And I believe that these are, if not identical to, extremely similar to uh, late 70s, early 80s XL bikes. So like 79, 80, 81, 82, all in there use very similar style calipers. But um, you can leave the bottom slide pin in, the top one, just unscrew it with an Allen. And I have said this before and I will continue to say it, this is not a how-to channel. I don't really like making how-to videos that are like cut and dry and you know, just kind of like, well, first we're gonna do this, now we're gonna do that, step-by-step -step instructional stuff. I don't really like doing that. There's a thousand other people out there who do that and they do a really good job of it. And I just kind of like making videos about whatever the hell I'm doing right then and there. Um, so, but with that said, sometimes I do slow down and, and try and show some things. And uh, yeah, so next we're gonna knock this bolt out and separate this. All right, so that separates it. Your brake pads are just on those two little mini slide pins that I'm getting my fingers all greasy with. And now we need to deal with getting the piston out of the caliper body. And I think this is gonna be quite a chore on these. I bet these are seized like you wouldn't believe. So I'm not even gonna bother trying to pry this piston out of there. I just I can already tell you just from the little bit I've tried, it's not going anywhere. Um, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna leave this bleeder screw tight and then I'm gonna take this line off right here and um, dang, that's on there pretty tight. Well, I'll get it off in a minute. I'm gonna take this line off and air up the compressor and get a rubber tip blow nozzle and we're gonna put it down into the brake hose fitting and see if we can put some compressed air into here and just push this piston out the other side. Hopefully it'll poof, go flying out and knock a hole through the roof. That'd be awesome. It's so long as it misses me on the way. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, there it went. So that went good. That was fun. I made a mess, but whatever, who cares? Um, man, this is nasty, but we were expecting this. Let me just goop some of this junk up on my fingies here. Um, yeah, yuck, gross, nasty. But all of this, it, it's going to be hard to get this on camera to get it zoomed in and off and focus and all, but the whole inside of this bore, as you can see right there, is absolutely foul. But this actually gives me hope. Um... This piston really doesn't look terrible. It's a little scuffed up right here, but you probably could reuse this. I'm not, just because I ordered new ones. But uh, honestly, I think if I dig all the seals out of this and really flush it, go crazy flushing this, I think I'll end up with something pretty clean and usable. I may end up even taking a small bore brush and just honing the inside of this just ever so slightly. Also, before I forget this, these calipers, like pretty much every caliper to ever have existed, are directional, meaning there is a left and a right, and the bleeder screw has to be facing up when it's on the bike or else it'll never bleed. Same with any brake caliper, hydraulic brake caliper, really. But try and keep your stuff separated. They do label them, you see the little L right there? Which is nice, but save yourself some heartache if you just remember which one's which. Throw them in a box or a bag or, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm trying to get 
this second one off and it just will not go i cannot budge it i've tried prying on it and see i've got some vice grips over here um i ended up pushing on it so much it was kind of back feeding it blew the tip off of my little blow nozzle um, I think what I'm going to try and do, same idea but different execution, is I'm going to round up a grease fitting and it'll screw into here. I probably have got one if I look around hard enough. I think I'm going to screw a grease fitting into the brake hose fitting and then I'm just going to pump this thing full of grease and, you know, same idea. The grease has to go to the back side of this piston. It should eventually pop that piston out, I hope. Um, you know, I'm only working with 140 or 150 pounds of shop air here. I got it turned up pretty high, but it will not do it. So we're gonna try. Uh, we're gonna try some grease. Oh, hey, look, you can you can see me in there. Hi, mom. Okay, I'm ADHD and off into squirrel land. Ooh, shiny object. All right, so I got a grease fitting that actually fits, and I started doing this off camera, and then I was like, oh, hey, why well, don't I grab the camera? Because check this out. I'm going to turn it so it's not facing directly at me. In fact, I might just uh, put it straight down on the workbench. I think that's it. Nice. Awesome. So that worked really good once I finally got the, you know, the right rig. So let's get this uh, apart and cleaned up and take a look and see how bad the bore of this uh, master, not master cylinder, the bore of this caliper, rather, is. Got the seals knocked out of this thing. And let me see if I can zoom it in anymore. Still see it's pretty grungy inside there. Um, I've been cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and I still got a lot more cleaning to do. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it on this cardboard here, but there was just all kinds of just gunk and debris and just crap in general that came out of this thing. Uh, there's all the grease that I that I pulled out of it, and um, our old seals are over there. But I'm going to keep working on this, going to keep cleaning this up, and uh, I guess I'm going to start on the other one too. And then hopefully uh, we'll end up with two fairly clean brake calipers. You might notice that I'm doing this on the ground outside of my little shop, mostly because this is greasy and dirty and nasty and gross, and uh, I'd rather it just be out here. There's really nothing exciting about this. It's basically just a lot of scraping and cleaning just to try and get all that. See all that? So all that crystallized, dried, old brake fluid and just general trash and gunk and crap out of these calipers. So I'm going to turn the camera off and go back to cleaning. And there we go. Calipers are rebuilt. Just clean it all out and um, I ended up taking a little scotch bright and just rubbing it around the piston bore there. Lots of brake clean, lots of scraping, lots of compressed air, lots of brake clean, lots of scraping, lots of compressed air. Those are two old pistons sitting on the workbench there. And, uh, yeah, so now all that is left is to take the pads with the slide pins and all of that and put them back on there so we have complete calipers. And these are these are new brake pads. I just put those on there. They have, uh, like, one mile on them. So before you go fussing about, you're using brake pads. Those are brand new pads. Um, yeah, and then we'll, uh, once all that's back together... Throw it over here onto the bike. And then hopefully bleed some brakes and go for a ride. All right, so we've got two brake calipers on now. And the lines are hooked up. But you might notice that I only attached them with the bottom bolt. And the reason for this is, you see right here, um, the camera's probably not going to focus that close. Oh, maybe it will. The bleeder screw basically hits the forks on this bike, which means that when you try and bleed them, if you try and get a box end wrench on them, um, you can't. There's not enough space, so you can use an open end, but I don't really like doing that. It kind of starts rounding the, the hex off. 
So my solution here is just leave the bottom one on and the top one off and you still have enough rotor underneath the pads that you're not overextending the piston inside of the caliper and bleed the brakes that way but um, both of the front brake hoses are on hey naked lady but I need to fill up the master cylinder with some brake fluid which might actually be my hang up right now I have a little bit hanging around here but not a whole lot so let's see if I can turn up some more brake fluid so I had enough brake fluid to fill the master cylinder up, but here's the problem. Uh, the last time I bled these brakes, I ended up having to use a vacuum bleeder, which might be what has to happen here, but as you just compress the front brake lever, I don't know if this is going to come through with on the camera with it being backlit. Let me try and move. Hang on. It's all wet right here. This is leaking. Those are brand new copper washers. I just put those on there. Brand new master cylinder, brand new line. This is tight. So I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm going to take this apart, but this is going to have to wait till later. It's getting kind of late in the day. I need to go pick Kenneth up, uh, my little boy. I got to get him from the YMCA after school. And um, we'll probably run to O'Reilly's and buy some new brake fluid, another can of brake fluid. And a, uh, I might buy a vacuum bleeder there too, but you can see how, how wet my, my little finger gets rubbing on this something's leaking here so we're gonna figure out is it the banjo bolt or copper washers it might even be the master cylinder um, and then fix that and move on it's a couple of days later and I have been out here um, working on this bike for quite some time this morning actually but I finally got this got this bled you can see here that I used a vacuum bleeder and that seemed to to do the trick, I at least was able to pull fluid through the calipers until it was running through the line, and then uh, I just bled it the rest of the way with, you know, the regular way you would do it by pulling the hand lever and cracking the bleeder screw loose and tightening it back up because I didn't quite have a firm enough uh, brake lever feel, but I feels pretty good. And um, let me zoom it in down there on the caliper and watch that caliper when I squeeze it might not come through real great on camera but um here let's try it again see it moving it's definitely definitely squeezing the piston and pushing the pads into the rotor so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um roll our calipers back up where they are supposed to go and put the rest of our fasteners in there, torque everything down, and then hose all this down with some brake clean just to get all this nasty, you know, residual brake fluid um, off of it. And then uh, I think I'm gonna make sure this thing will crank up and run. And if it will run here in the shop, then um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and take it up the road. I also just realized that I failed to mention what my solution was up here for this leak. Um, I ended up, I took this bolt, the banjo bolt, back out and I just looked at the threads on it and the threads in there and then maybe looked a little boogered up. Um, it really, it's not like it was cross threaded or anything, but I ran a die across the banjo bolt and I just gently ran a tap into this and made sure the tap was uh, covered in grease to pick up any shavings I might generate and then flush it out with brake cleaning compressed air. And uh, then I replaced both of the copper crush washers there, put it all back together and um, tightened it down and filled the reservoir of the master cylinder up with brake fluid and just let it sit overnight and I came out here the next morning and it was still holding fluid and not leaking so that's what the solution to that was all right so I've got my full face helmet on with my GoPro strapped to it and uh, I'll be completely honest I really don't want to be wearing this thing right now because it's like 82 degrees in November which is insane um, but we're gonna go for a ride and check out these front brakes and um if they all seem pretty good then i think i'll probably try and get on the throttle a little bit more than i did last time because i was really afraid to open this thing up last time because i didn't know how good i was going to be able to stop so let's go on a uh, test ride and hopefully all of our test stops go appropriately well and um yeah Come on, baby. Need more choke? Yep. I 
Also, uh, I've moved the um, I've moved the position of the camera, or not the camera, the microphone inside of my helmet to try and get a little bit better audio. My audio was kind of crappy last time I did this, but. I feel like having the uh, first person view of things is fun sometimes, and uh, it's one of my live thoughts. Puppy dog. Okay, cool. Well, we can stop with the front brakes, which is what we want. Let's try, uh, let's try going a little faster. Everything I got, just front brakes. But I think that with the back brakes and uh, you know, you don't ride like an idiot. Or respectful of your surroundings. Should be sufficient. I'll play with them some more. I'd like to get them a little better than that. my last episode you probably might remember that I was having some issues with it kind of spitting and sputtering and um, hmm. I might have knocked the choke off too soon there's no way doesn't seem like it wants to idle and second gear is super duper hard to find you gotta really kick the shifter up Here's not as bad, but this, uh, these forward controls on this bike are going to be the next thing to go. They are not comfortable for me. I do not like them. I don't like the way they look. I hate the way they shift their shifts. There's so many linkages and just crap and garbage and um, in the way. And uh, it really all just makes for a very lousy riding experience as far as the shifter is concerned. The forward brakes aren't too bad, but I still prefer to have my brakes, uh, all of my foot controls, like right underneath me. Thanks, dude. That was nice. back in the shop and uh, I spent a couple minutes playing around with the carburetor and we'll roll some footage of that in right here. Seems like it's doing a little bit better as far as idle goes, but 
I'm gonna let carburetor tuning on this bike be its own whole separate episode. This one's already pretty long and we'll address that accelerator pump uh, housing leak during that episode. So y'all have something else to watch on this bike here pretty soon. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this went with the brakes and everything. Um, I think I spent 60 or 70 bucks on that rebuild kit, which included the pistons. And that's a whole lot cheaper than the, the three or four hundred dollars I was going to spend on, you know, buy two new calipers for this thing. Anyways, uh, thank you as always for watching. It's a pleasure having everybody here on this channel. And we'll see you on the next one.